I just like to break down some of these really interesting, uh, unique senators that you decided to cover in your book and what they meant to the nation, and more importantly, what they meant to you representing so many people. One senator, Bobby Kennedy, that you mentioned, he was known really to help the poor. Do you believe there was a great hypocrisy that he would spend his summers up at Hyannisport <laughs> and Martha's Vineyard at the compound, and then during the year, you'd be helping the poor. Did you find there was well, a dichotomy? Well, went to Hyannisport and then voted for tax cuts for rich people. I mean, I, I, I don't, we don't ask our elected officials to take vows of poverty, so mm -hmm. I, I, my, my, my more interesting judging of Kennedy, if human beings should judge one another, is that he started off his career, he worked for Joe McCarthy, right. as you know. Yep. His father was um, controversial, I'll leave Joe it at that. <laughs> and Bobby, um, Bobby, really became, and I, I don't engage in psychoanalysis here, but Bobby became Bobby Kennedy at two, two times and two things seemed to happen to him that made him the compassionate man he was when he, when he turned into his 40s. First of all, the first two Kennedy brothers weren't particularly good senators, mm -hmm. um, and, there, and they, they became, they weren't particularly, they, 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 Jack, Jack wasn't known to be a particularly good senator. Bobby wasn't really known for his work in the Senate on legislation. But two things happened. One is assassination of his brother changed Bobby for sure. Mm -hmm. The other was told to me by Marion Wright Edelman. Oh. And you know that name. Marion Wright, Mar then Marion Wright was working, it was running Head Start in Mississippi in 1965, part of the progressive era of LBJ, Medicare, Medicaid, um, the, the Wilderness Act, the Higher Ed Act, um, the immigration bill, part of that was to set up um, Head Start. And the governor, the, because Democrats had to can't, had to, had to um, compromise with Southern segregationist Democrats in those days, um, now that whole wing of the Democratic Party has become Republicans, obviously, the segregationist, conservative, all that. Because of that, um, governors had the right to turn down Head Start. So they wrote the law in a way that, that somebody else could run the Head Start program. So Marion Wright is a 28, 29, 30-year-old former law student, graduate of Yale Law School, went to Mississippi to run the program. And it, it was the largest employer in Mississippi at the time. She was going up against the whole white establishment. And she was working in the Mississippi Delta in the poorest area, that or Eastern Kentucky, the poorest areas in our country. And Bobby Kennedy came to visit. And Connie and I had dinner with Marion Wright Edelman, this is in the book, this this story, that she didn't like the Kennedys much in 1965. And she didn't like them because the Senate in those days, or still, the senators from the state um, they represent send on, send judges to the president. And they make the determination the president chooses among the ones they send. Well, the, if you remember the civil rights era, the good judges, the ones that decided on the side that I assume most of you are on, the side I'm on, were Republican judges from Eisenhower. Because the chairman of the Judiciary Committee was a, was a segregationist Democrat from Mississippi named Eastland, mm -hmm. and he would not approve any good judges in the South mm -hmm. that for, for, for Kennedy, or for any other Democrat, for Kennedy, I guess. So um, she didn't like the Kennedys because Jack Kennedy just folded for Eastland mm -hmm. and did what he wanted. So she didn't expect to like Bobby, and he showed up. He was accompanied by his aide, Peter Edelman, now you're now her name is Mary Wright Edelman, right? And she thought she didn't like him, she didn't like Bobby, she didn't like anything about this. And then she tells she told us a story. She went, she saw Bobby uh, take his coat off and go into a home uh, and, and wouldn't let the wouldn't let television cameras come into the home. And she told us she said he held a baby in his arms that was so dirty. She said I wouldn't have held him, but Bobby Kennedy did. And she said I saw he didn't want TV in there. She said I saw compassion that I've rarely seen in a human being. Mm. Then as they were driving away, the motorcade that they were in, a, I don't know, three, four, five cars, hit a child's dog in the Delta, in this area, and she said he had killed the dog, and she said the way Bobby got out and comforted the little boy who owned the dog made her think very differently about mm. Bobby. And I think Bobby had an epiphany mm. through through the suffering he saw. And you know, that's, that's why, when Hugo Black's my first story, right Hugo Black was a KKK member um, when he started. Um, by the time he went to the Senate and fought for, for collective bargaining and other labor law reform, and then when he became a Supreme Court justice, 
uh, he his evolution was complete.